Sweet Alaska. Well, we tried to make the last night of the voyage a memorable one, Mrs. Henry. And uh, it is the Fuhrer's birthday. No, Mr. Tootsbury, there will be no war between England and Germany. Well, we're all the same stock, all North Europeans. It would be a sad thing for brothers to fall out. <laughs> There's a nice ring to it, doesn't it, Pam? Remind me to include it in my next broadcast. <laughs> Oh, nobody wants war now, anyways. Absolutely nobody. It would be so silly nowadays. Does your wife speak for the United States Navy, Commander? She speaks for Piper Heitzig, 34. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I have just had the pleasure of lecturing at your Naval War College, Commander. Really? What was your impression? Your Navy is the one fighting force in the world today which can compare professionally with the German Army. I would put in a word for the Royal Navy and the RAF. I'm afraid, sir, it is already well known that the Royal Air Force have lost air parity to the Luftwaffe. As for the Royal Navy, that is the province of Commodore Grobke and his U-boats. Not a bad Navy, but they have damn good U-boats. You had U-boats last time. <laughs> we did fine, until America came in. Were you in the Atlantic then? Destroyers. I was below. Maybe this is not the first time we meet, huh? Maybe. Foster. My dear Mrs. Henry, may I have the honor of this first dance? That is, commanding with your permission. By all means, Captain. Thank you. Tell me, General, will your Fuhrer attack Poland? His whole brilliance lies in his bloodless victories. The Polish corridor is an idiotic anomaly. The Fuhrer will find a solution. No war over Danzig? No war. None that is that Germany will start. Well, I suppose you're on school vacation. Yes, for quite some time. I'm 28. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were about my daughter's age. She's 19. Many people make that mistake, Commander. I suppose it's because I'm always with my father. I help him with his work. His eyes aren't very good. Well, that must be interesting. Depends on the subject matter. Nowadays, it's somewhat of a broken record. Will the little tramp go, or won't he? Mrs. Grumpy. Most energetic dancer, your wife, Commodore. Thank you. Thank you. Eric. Ah, gentlemen, excuse us, please. <laughs> Dead, Henry. Woman's tarnished. Oh, oh. Almost makes one wonder how that Grumpy fellow's held up as well as he has. A great deal of sea duty, no doubt. <laughs> <laughs> well, fraternizing with Jenny, were you? Strictly in the line of duty. He's invited me out to inspect the sub base at Schwinnemunde. Mm. Anyway, I doubt that Grumpy's a Nazi. You do, eh? Well, as you boat fellas are all right, I suppose. As much as any Germans are. <laughs> Can we have another dance later? Of course, thank you. Thank you. Oh. I shall get myself a white wig and a cane. They look so shattered when I refuse. And as for that hateful conga. Oh. The Fuhrer's ball. I've been covering that fellow, Henry, since the day he marched into Austria. Something right out of Plutarch, a, a zero of a man, with no schooling, of no known family. At 20, a dropped-out student, a drifter, a failure. I watched that man march in triumph through the streets of Vienna, where he had sold postcards and gone hungry. The sole heir to the combined thrones of the Habsburgs and the Hohenzollerns. The grotesque travesty is the central truth of our age. And the only reason for this damn ball. Well, you created him, you know. I beg your pardon. Fuhrer, you and the French, 
Your insane Treaty of Versailles partitioned Germany, made an economic and political madhouse of Europe. Do you think that could last? You generated a volcanic resentment in our people. Hitler is the political eruption. Is the German army with him? He has rearmed us. He has given us back our self-esteem. And terror and concentration camps. All forms of politics are dirty, my friend. Democracies, dictatorships, variations on one theme. Please the mob. Meine Damen und Herren, ladies and gentlemen, I propose a toast. A toast to Germany's great leader, Adolf Hitler, on his 50th birthday, and to his life's aim, peace. Der Führer! Der Führer! Der Führer. Good morning. Good morning. Achtung, Achtung. Wir warten etwa drei Stunden an den an den Passagieren warten. Would you mind if I joined you? Oh, yes, thank you. I feel so stupid preparing to smile at 40 feet. Doesn't your father believe in before breakfast walks? Talky. He hates exercise of any kind. Besides, right now, he has a touch of gout. It's his curse. Talky? His middle name is Talcott. Ever since school, he's been talky to his friends. Guess why? Where's your wife, Commander? Also not a walker? Oh, she's busy packing. Not that she walked to the corner drugstore, she can catch a ride or hail a cab. Will you be coming back to the United States? Well, if Father gets thrown out of Berlin, which seems inevitable, I suppose we will. Why? I have a son I should like you to meet. Um, unlike his father, he's quite handsome. Oh? What does he do? Naval officer, like his father. A sailor? Never. A girl in every port. Don't you have any other sons, Commander? As a matter of fact, I do. But, uh, he'd be a bit young for you. Maybe not. I never do seem to hit it quite right. I say, Commander! Just had a word with that Grumpke fella. Managed to horn in on your little trip to Schweinemunde. I hope you're not put off. Not at all. Glad to have you along. Uh. Talky, I thought you were packing. We'll be in dock any minute now. That's exactly why I'm here. I've made a muck of it. You know I can't handle things of that kind. 
Well, what are you standing there for, you lazy creature? Say au revoir to Commander Henry and go below and get my things together. Shall we see you in Berlin? Of course. I shall be pumping in for the latest military intelligence. And learning nothing, I'll be bound. I'll be to Zane, Commander. Go on. Dudsbury, I have notions of matching your daughter up with a son of mine. Oh, have you? I warn you, Pamela's a handful. Why, how can you say that? I've never met a gentler or pleasanter girl. Still waters, I warn you. <laughs> See you in Berlin.